Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the different types of taxes. We're going to break down the taxes in the United States under different under three different categories. Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the, the three different types of taxes in the United States, which are property taxes, transaction taxes, and income taxes. Now, when you think of taxes, the first thing you think of is income taxes, which is taxes that you pay on your income, on your earnings, whether you are an employee or a self-employed individual. But there are many other taxes that government, state, local, and federal impose on us, such as property taxes, transaction taxes. In this session, we will focus on property taxes and transaction taxes. And property taxes will be taxes on personal property based on the value ad valorem, like property and personal. Under transaction taxes, we're going to look at various federal, state, and local excise taxes, estate taxes, which is kind of part of excise taxes, as well as gift taxes, sales tax, and use tax. The main course is about income taxes. However, we do cover estate taxes and gift taxes in separate chapters. So we're going to start by discussing property taxes. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Property taxes. What are property taxes? Property taxes, also known as ad valorem. It means based on the value. It's a form of a wealth-based tax. It means the higher the value of that property, whatever that property happens to be. Usually when we think of property taxes, we think of taxes on property, on homes that you own. Property taxes are levied usually on buildings, homes, and land. Also, that's property. And in some state, proper, ad valorem, which is taxes based on property, is also subject to personal property, which is other than land and building. And that's very important. It's not an old state. And it's very important to determine whether the tax is a ad valorem property tax. Why? Because it is indeed a property tax based on the value of the asset. Then it could provide you a deduction for the federal income taxes. Well, when you pay taxes on your home, you, you can get a deduction on your Schedule A, itemized deduction. You can if you happen to itemize. Now, in some state, if you pay taxes on certain personal property based on the value of that property, that's also deductible. Now, why do state and local government use this type of revenue, this type of taxes? It's a form of revenue. And usually what they do is they use this revenue usually to finance the school district. So property taxes finance the school district. And it's a major source of revenue for many cities, counties in the United States. What are the property, the property taxes? Real property taxes generally encompass real estate. So when we think of property taxes, you think of real estate, building, and fixtures, which are items so integrated into the property that removing them can cause damage. So when we think about property, it's something that cannot be moved from one place to the other. A car, you could always move it from one place to the other. A home, an office building cannot be moved. For example, a built-in bookcase and installed electrical wiring are fixture, but a movable fix bookcase is not. So if you have a bookcase, if it's in the wall, fixed in the wall, and you cannot move it if you move, if you sell this house, it's part of the property. If it's a bookcase where you can move if you happen to sell the house and move, then it's a personal property. And how assets are defined, again, matters for taxation, especially in places without this ad valorem tax on personal property. Because if it's not ad valorem, it's not tax on value, then it's not deductible. So in some states, you do have ad valorem tax on personal property that could apply to vehicles, boats, 
that are owned by individuals. So when you pay your taxes on the vehicle, that tax is deductible as long as it's based on the value of the asset. Let's move now to transaction taxes. Transaction taxes applies to various transfers. It's transaction, something happened at a manufacturer level, wholesale level, and retail level. It's basically when there's a purchase and a sale between two parties, it's a transaction. Also the government can level, can levies transaction taxes and any government level can do. You pay federal taxes, you might pay state, and you might pay local based on transaction. Usually these taxes are calculated as a percentage of the value of the, of the transferred property. So for example, 6%, 5% of the transaction. So we're gonna look at these type of transaction taxes. One type of transaction taxes is excise tax. And the federal government imposed this excise tax. This tax is usually imposed on tobacco, fuel, gasoline, and air travel. Most of these taxes, not all, the aim of them, the goal, is to influence social and economic behavior. For example, taxes on tobacco. They don't want you to smoke. It's not good for the healthcare system. Therefore, they impose taxes. Um, gas, gas, Gasler tax. Well, encouraging you to buy a car that's fuel efficient and for manufacturers to produce fuel efficient car. Now, for example, gasoline tax is also to encourage you to use public transportation, but it's also to maintain the highways and air, air travel, for example, for safety. State and local excise often mirror federal, federal ones. So basically, if the federal government imposes taxes on tobacco and fuel, the, the state and the federal, the state and the local government will go ahead and impose taxes as well. So all state, they have tax, gasoline, liquor, and tobacco, but the rate between each state is different. So in certain state, they might, they might tax the tobacco at 50% or 40% at a high rate, another state it might be 20%. For example, they might add on every gallon of gasoline, you know, 30 pennies or 20 pennies or whatever. Now, because of this, I'll tell you a story. Some people, what they do, they move, they, they go to one state, which is illegal, buy tobacco from that state, transport it back, and sell it in their state where the where the taxes are higher. For example, if you live in New York, to give you an example, and let's assume the, the, the excise tax on tobacco for the sake of simplicity, 20%, I don't know how much it is, I'm just making an, uh, making up numbers. What, what, what some people would do, they will go to another state where the, the, the percentage on the tobacco is like 3% or 5%. They will buy the tobacco there, they go, to the New, they go to New York and they sell it for less than what other people are selling it because they were able to save some money. Well, that's illegal, but nevertheless, I'm just telling you that's that just FYI from the real world. Certain counties charge transaction tax on document recorded property transfers in most counties, at least where I live in Pennsylvania. So if you buy a property and you want to transfer that property into your name, the county will transfer the property, will, will register that in your name. And what you do in the in, in, in where I live, you pay 1% of the value of that property. Other state and local excise taxes, recently what was happening, they are imposing a lot of taxes on hotel occupancy, rental car, why? And Airbnb, why? Well, think about it, why? Because these people that stays in hotels and they rent car are not local people. They're what they call transient occupancy tax, T-O-T, transient occupancy tax. tax. Because what they do, they go there, they stay for a week, for a few days, basically as a tourist, or they're going by and they leave. So if you pay tax, if you impose taxes on them, they cannot vote. They cannot vote you out. So they take advantage. So when you go and you purchase a hotel, be careful. If they told you the room is two fifty, well, I would say add a twenty to thirty percent in taxes to that two fifty, because what what happened is the hotel is only required to quote their price, the room price, but it's it gets quite expensive after you add all the state, local taxes in the area, occupancy test, and especially a lot of taxes on Airbnb. These, ta these taxes target, as I mentioned, non-voting visitors, transient people, funding projects like convention centers or sports arena. For example, Houston's hotel tax total 17%, broken down by state, city, county, and sports authority charges. 
I'm telling you, in some places, it's even higher than 20%. I know in Canada, which is outside the U.S., the additional taxes is approximately 25 to 30% of your bill, of your hotel bill. Let's move to general sales tax. That's also a transaction tax. As the, as, as the word suggests, it's a sales tax. When you buy something, when you buy something from a store, for example, you buy something for $100 in Pennsylvania, well, you have to add 6% to it and you have to pay $106. 100 is the item price and you pay $6 for the state. Now, gen general sales tax differ from ex excise tax in scope because it applies to everyone. It applies to everyone that make a purchase. While excise tax apply to specific transaction, like 18.4% per gallon on the gasoline. So if you don't buy gasoline, you know, we don't have to worry about this tax. General tax apply broadly. General taxes apply broadly, such as 5%, for example, in Pennsylvania, at 6%. And it differ from state to state because there's no federal sales tax. The sales tax is a state level. And there's in some cities, there's a state tax and city tax, for example, New York and Philadelphia. However, this distinction can blur. Some state exempt some groceries or drugs from sales tax because they think they are essentials. And if you buy groceries to eat, they should not charge you. And this rate can vary with special rates like items like agricultural equipment, prescription drugs, or automobiles. And within the the sales category, they have different taxes in some state. For example, they might tax more or less agricultural equipment, prescription drugs, the same thing, or automobile, depending on what's what's the purpose. What do they want to do? They want to encourage you to spend money on this item or not. Use tax is very similar to sales tax, but it's, it's it complement the sales tax. And use tax became very prominent. When I left practice, I left practice in 2010, I believe, in 2010. What happened before 2010, 2007, 2008, 2009, we were going through the Great Recession and states were desperate for money. So what they did, they started to implement this use tax because what happened is this, what's a use tax? A use tax, it applies to goods, you purchase something outside your state, but you live within the state, preventing preventing you from paying sales tax. I'll give you a case a case in point. If you live in PA and next to PA, the state of Delaware, there is no sales tax. There is no sales tax in the state of Delaware. There is a 6% state sales tax in Pennsylvania. So what some people do, if they're living right on the border, and I live right on the border, I'm like 10, mi 10 minutes away from the, the state of Delaware. What people would do, they'll go to the state of Delaware, purchase something like an item, a car, for example. If, if you purchase a car, if you're talking about a $30,000 car and you have to pay 6% in Pennsylvania, that's approximately $1,800, not approximately $1,800. Well, if you go to Delaware, you don't have to pay the, the, the sales tax. If you live in Pennsylvania, you have to pay the sales tax. So what happened is some people will go to Delaware, buy the car. So what states started to figure out that, hold on a second, we are losing a lot of money a lot of money with this use, uh, with, with people going outside the state and buying stuff. Well, what they did, they imposed this use tax where they send you a form with your taxes, say, well, if you purchase something from outside the state, report and pay the sales tax. This this got very, very bad where people, New Yorker, people from New York, they will order their, it's, they will, especially from Apple store, they will order their computer from an Apple to, a, to an Apple store in Delaware. And what they would do, they will ship it to the to the Apple store and they will drive. It will be cheaper for them to drive from Penn, from New York to Delaware to pick it up or they ask the Delaware office to mail it for them. It would, be, it would still be cheaper than paying the sales taxes in New York. And also another example of this is New Yorker. I remember 10 years, longer than 10 years ago, 20 years ago, before the internet became prominent. If you go to those shopping centers in Pennsylvania, those what they call the, they call them outlets outlet stores you would see two three buses from new york you know bringing people to shop because new yorkers they would come to pennsylvania and pay less tax it will be worth it for them and they will spend it the whole day in pennsylvania which will be like a something to do on sunday you would see those buses not anymore because people can buy online um, now collection methods differ per state some let individual pay the pay with their state income tax and in pennsylvania they send you a form it's called the use tax and you'll have to fill it out 
Alaska, Delaware, and Montana, as I told you, Delaware, I'm very familiar with because it's next to me, don't have any sales or use tax, and there is no federal sales or use tax. So if you, if you live in Delaware, you don't pay any sales tax because every time you go to the store, there's no sales tax, and there's no income tax for that matter, which is good to no, no state income tax. Severance tax are transaction taxes on extracted natural resources like oil or coal, rooted in the idea that the state had a stake in its resource, and that's a major source of revenue in states like Texas and Hawaii, where natural resource is, is abundant. Taxes on transfers at death, which is basically when the person dies, there's an estate and inheritance tax. Inheritance is on, it doesn't apply to the federal level. Related to property upon death, categorized also as a form of estate tax, of excise taxes. Estate taxes, now there's the estate tax. Estate tax is charged on the person that passed away, on the decedent's estate. So when you pass away, well, what happened is they look at everything. They look at the value of your property, stocks, bonds, whatever you have left, and they they could charge a tax. Inheritance tax, if one person passes away, they pass the property to another individual. The individual receiving the property on the federal level, there is no inheritance tax. So inheritance tax applies to people who receive the money. Inheritance tax only available on the state level and in some state. Estate tax, taxing the person that passed away, the property of the person that passed away is a federal tax. So the federal government don't have an inheritance tax. So the federal government only enforces an estate tax. Some state imposes inheritance, estate, or both. States like Florida and Texas don't have any of these taxes. You just If you want to die, die in Florida or Texas. Federal estate tax. Let's talk about the federal. It was introduced in the Revenue Act of 1916, and the reason they did this is to what? Is to break wealth concentration because if you're extremely rich then you pass your all your wealth to your kids and grandkids then that wealth will be concentrated well what they did is they imposed taxes so if you're extremely rich and we're going to see what extremely rich this tax is not imposed until you are multi-millionaire this tax only applies to few people and its success is debated there's always the the discussion that you we should we should eliminate this federal estate tax now, estate taxes can be minimized, minimized, it means reduced through tax planning. So rich people don't wait to, to die to pay taxes on their estate. They plan ahead. They do some tax planning. They pay lawyers and accountant and CPAs to help them plan. Property is valued. It's either at the date of that or six months after. So how do you know what's the property value of the decedent, of the person that died? You would look either at the fair value at the date of death or six months later. And we'll have a whole, chap whole chapter about this. Now, you can deduct funeral cost, debt, charitable transfer, and sometimes the marital deduction for the amount passed to a surviving spouse. So if husband and wife, the wife passed away, everything goes to the husband or vice versa, then there is no taxes because the transfer between the two is X. You know, excluded from taxes, but if they, if, it, if they pass this property to their kids, then you have taxes. After determining the taxable estate and adding gifts given during life, because also the gift tax is included with the estate tax, the tax is computed. Now, don't worry, we're going to talk about gift taxes and estate taxes later. This is just an overview. But keep in mind, there's a credit. There's something called the unified transfer credit, and this credit is in millions, are subtracted. So after you kind of Figure out what's your estate, minus all the cost, minus charitable transfer. Then the government gives you a large credit. And whatever is left after the credit, it's the taxable amount. Again, only applies to people with multi-million dollars. State taxes on transfers at death. Some state taxes impose inheritance and estate taxes. We already talked about the estate taxes. What's the inheritance? The inheritance when the money goes to you the person that's surviving. State inheritance often characterize heirs based on their relation to the decedents. Close relatives usually pay lower rate or have a higher exemption. Okay, many state exempt amount transfer to a surviving spouse from taxation. Same thing as federal. If this money going to the spouse, husband or wife, then it's exempt, just like the on the federal level. Gift taxes. What's gift taxes? A gift is an excise tax on property transferred made during one 
lifetime. So basically, if estate taxes is when someone passed away, they give you a, I'm going to quote, a gift, but it's after they pass away. This is what the estate tax is. So the person, the donor, the person that's giving you that gift, well, the estate, the state will pay taxes on that. Gift taxes is when someone gives you something when they're still alive. Now, again, the donor here is responsible for the taxes. The donee, if you receive the gift, you're not responsible for the taxes. This tax was introduced in 1932. The federal gift tax complement the estate tax. Again, they are connected together, and you'll see how later, preventing tax evasion through lifetime gift. So what they, the gift tax is imposed for the reason of, for example, before you die, you gift everything, and that's it. Then the people that receive the gift don't pay any taxes. So they want you to avoid from paying taxes because when you die, they look at all of your estate, all of your asset. And if you gift everything, then there's no tax. Therefore, what they do, they keep track of your gift throughout your lifetime and they add it to your estate. Taxable gifts are those exceeding the annual exclusion minus the marital deduction. You can, again, gift husband and spouse, they don't count the gift between them. But what happened is you can gift, for example, a certain amount for the sake of illustration for the year 2023. You can gift anyone $17,000 without any consequence to you or the donor or the donee. So if I want to open the phone book and give everyone $17,000, well, guess what? I don't have to worry about gift taxes. I don't have to, and the obviously the people receiving this money don't receive any gift taxes. So in my class, I always tell my students, if I give each one of you whatever that amount is, that's going to change in 24, 25, 26, so on and so forth. But there's always an annual exclusion. I can give, you can give 17,000 for any individual. Just you stop someone on the street, here's $17,000 to you. There's no tax effect to you, the donor. There's no ta tax effect to the donee. Let's assume you gave them, um, for the sake of illustration, you gave someone $13,000. You stop someone at the street and say, okay, here's $13,000, a gift from me to you. Well, here's what's going to happen. Minus 17, what's left is 13000 Now you keep track of this gift. You say, I gifted 13000 why do you keep track of it? Because you have to add all your gift, the excess of the exclusion, okay? And add them up when you pass away to determine whether you exceed the limit or not. Don't worry about this. We'll talk about this later. I'm just giving you an idea. Now, you can give another individual 30000 as well. Then you subtract 17 and what's left is 13. So the first 17000 to any individual is basically no tax consequences. Now, a married couple can elect to split gift, letting half from the donor and half you know, half from the donor spouse, what's going to happen is, and the other half from the other spouse, then you can double the gift. The annual exclusion is doubled. So let's take a look at this MCQ multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. All the following are taxes imposed by various government entities except. So three are imposed and one is not a tax imposed. The severance taxes, is that imposed by by a government entity and the answer is yes remember some states impose this tax severance tax this is usually taxed natural resources oil coal so a is out b occupational fees you remember we talked about occupational fees hotels local and state government they they love those taxes because it tax transient occupant so they don't care because these people are not staying there they are leaving they don't have, to, they cannot vote them out. Therefore, it is a tax imposed. The inheritance tax. Well, is it the inheritance tax? Well, the federal government don't impose inheritance tax, but the state government do. So be careful. A state tax, you have the federal and maybe the state. When it comes to the inheritance tax, there is no federal inheritance tax, but there is in some states, state inheritance tax. Therefore, C, this is a tax is imposed. D, well, by process of elimination, D is the answer, the export duties. Be careful, here they are confusing you. Do you know what export duties? Because tariffs is a form of income. You could, you know, a form of tax. It actually, we did not even discuss tariffs, but tariffs also is a form of transaction tax. When you buy something from, it's, it's so small now that no one, worries about tariffs tax. Tariffs is when you buy something from another country and you try to bring it in, they impose taxes on you. It's a transaction tax. The government imposes transaction on you. Well, 
export duties it's when you export something when you sell something to 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 out to to outside your country for example in the us if you sell something to canada to mexico to europe or to any other country well there's no taxes imposed on that the government loves it when you sell when you sell your prop your your goods and services outside the country because you're bringing money to the country so this is not a tax imposed so the answer is d not because here have all are except that's not not the federal not the state not the local government impose this export duties what should you do now you should go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs true false questions that's going to help you do what learn your income tax course better invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe